Hey, this is Goldie again. Uh, I've invested this week to understand uh, Google's newly launched Bring Your Own Identity option for Google Cloud customers. That's called Workforce Identity Federation, which essentially means you can now authenticate and access GCP or Google Cloud resources without a need to provision those identities inside Google Cloud. So let me share my understanding uh, in this video. And then in the following videos, I will show you how to set that up if you're using identity providers like Okta or Azure and others. Now, before we talk about how does it work, let's understand the why behind it. So before this solution called Workforce Identity Federation, in case if you are a Google Cloud customer and if you're already using some third-party identity provider like Okta, Azure, Ping, etc., and if you need to uh, use Google Cloud, you still need to provision your identities. That means your users and groups and members inside Google Cloud Identity. And, and it works great because most of the prominent identity providers already have some sort of integration with Google Cloud so that you can automatically provision identities from third-party IDP to Google. But there are some use cases where you might find this uh, limitation. Uh, think of a use case where you have outsourced your Google Cloud uh, application management or, or infrastructure or security management with third party. Now this third party will need access to your Google Cloud resources so that they can authenticate, they can you know, look at things, etc. In this specific use case, you will need to first provision their users into your uh, organization directory and then give them access. And sometimes it's not the best uh, solutions that Google Cloud customers uh, like you uh, might uh, uh, go with. And that's where let's talk about the newly launched uh, Workforce Identity Federation or Bring Your Own Identity with Google Cloud, where identity provisioning inside Google is not a requirement. And it comes with uh, a few benefits for sure. For example, uh, now your identity management can be more uh, efficient because you do not need to spin up uh, Google Cloud directory sync servers or you know, uh, no need to set up user lifecycle management from uh, Okta or Azure or any other IDP to Google. And also you will have flexibility to manage use cases where you need uh, to provide access to either your uh, employees or maybe third party uh, contractors or vendors or, or partners to access your resources inside Google Cloud. You can do that and either you manage their identities inside your IDP such as Okta or let them manage uh, those identities. So once you do the authentication with their system, you know their system can uh, keep authenticating so you don't need to provision them inside your IDP or Google Cloud uh, identity for sure. Now let's talk about uh, Workforce Identity Federation terminology, which will be very helpful when you do the setup with me in next videos with Okta, Azure, etc. So in terms of terminology, uh, very specific to Google Cloud Workforce Identity Federation is Workforce Identity Federation pools and pool providers. Now, if you have used LDAP, for example, Active Directory in the past, I'm confident you have, in that you create organizational units and groups uh, with an objective to pro, you know, create kind of subset of your organization. So you may do that based on a geographical location or department wise, such as marketing, HR, sales, etc. Uh, you do the same in Google Cloud Workforce Identity Federation by creating pools. So pools uh, will be essentially uh, subset of uh, of your identities. So you may create pools like uh, sales, marketing, HR, uh, APAC, Americas, contractors, full time, and so on. So think of pool as a you know logical uh, uh, subset of your identities, and then you can create pool providers where you will define who the identity provider is for this specific pool and one workforce identity pool may have more than one identity provider. So maybe you have employees 
pool uh, and then in that you have Azure and Okta both as identity providers and then you have some you know uh, rules defining who will be using which IDP for authentication or maybe on your contractors pool you can only have let's say one identity provider and so on and and by the way workforce identity pools they are at org level so they are not just limited to one project so once you configure the pool because they are org level resources you can then leverage them in any of the projects that you have inside your google cloud organization now in terms of claims and attributes not specific to a workforce identity federation it's pretty standard if you have uh, ever used uh, saml or oidc based integration with google or with any other party you know that uh, whatever information you send in your saml response or in oidc token for example users email address uh, which groups uh, this user is member of these all are attributes or claims that you would be able to use uh, when you make decision on which user will have what kind of IAM permission uh, inside Google Cloud. Now attribute conditions, we'll talk uh, more about that in when I show you this actual setup in next video, uh, but uh, you know you can uh, give them attribute based uh, access. So for example, you can say if the user department is equal to security then they should be able to access security command center inside google uh, cloud otherwise not okay and finally the principle and principle set this is nothing new i mean when you do iam in uh, google cloud you define the principle which may be for example a single entity uh, or a group or uh, service account or domain etc uh, principle set on principle is the same here uh, the format is a bit different when you assign these federated identities now let's talk about how does it work at least on the theoretical side and then in the next video I'll show you how to set that up so by default when you go to console.cloud.google.com and you you know enter your email address uh, password uh, optionally MFA you get access to Google Cloud console and you can leverage resources but in this case, you will not have identities provisioned inside Google. So if you go to that same uh, login screen and you put your email, Google will say that email does not exist or that identity does not exist. And that's why with Workforce Identity Federation, once you're done with the setup, Google gives you this uh, separate or dedicated uh, login page. Uh, where you will your users will see something like this where they need to enter this provider name format uh, that's a long one but uh, I'll, I'll share a tip on how you can change it uh, so that your users don't need to enter this long uh, this long string okay so as soon as uh, your users enter the required details on this authentication screen behind the scenes there will be an IDP lookup uh, that will take place. So for example, you have the, your, uh, the Workforce Identity Federation setup where you have your pools, such as employees and contractors, and then inside those pools you have your identity providers defined, such as Okta or Azure, and based on that, Google will make a decision where this specific user or federated identity should be redirected. Let's say, take an example that they will be redirected to Okta based on this lookup. Then, in, in case that user is already authenticated, the token will be sent uh, right away. If not, then user will need to first authenticate with Okta. Once the authentication is done, your IDP will send the uh, ID token, is, uh, uh, assuming it's an OIDC uh, integration, uh, to Google's uh, security token service, which will uh, you know, validate with IDP that this token is, is is valid, and then there will be internal processing to figure out which IAM uh, access is is granted to this specific user. Now, before you set this up, uh, I'll put the link in the description of this video. But I highly recommend you to first uh, read about uh, VPC service control limitations uh, and also product. Uh, coverage limitations for example 
at the time of recording this video, which is what, October 3rd week of 2023, uh, security uh, uh, token service uh, and uh, uh, pool uh, API, I think uh, they are not yet protected with VPC service controls if you use them. Uh, but the resources that you're using inside those, you know, the, the resources that you will be granting access to uh, for these workforce uh, federated identities, they might be covered with VPC service control. Uh, so I'll, uh, I'll put the link in the description. Do watch which products uh, are covered with Workforce Identity Federation. And if they are, then uh, consider using this. Okay. And if not, then maybe uh, you might need to wait for some more time uh, till Google adds uh, those also in Workforce Identity Federation. Okay, with that, well, thank you so much. In the next video, I will show you how you can uh, set up a Workforce Identity Federation with Okta. I'll make separate videos for Okta and Azure, separate for OIDC and SAML, so that you do not need to provision those identities inside Google Cloud Identity or Google Cloud, but you can still let these federated identities authenticate via your third-party IDP and also get uh, given or granted IEM access to those Google resources. Thank you so much. If you have any feedback or comment, don't hesitate to put that under this video and I'll be happy to collaborate. Take care, guys.